this is what we do. We, we actually have to allow the feelings to surface. We can't just push them out of awareness and think that that's going to handle it. You know, we have to allow them to come up and really learn to see them with the Holy Spirit. You know, to see them in a different way and then, in that sense, release them from our mind forever. <coughs> so it was very beautiful. We actually, it's the first one-on-one -on -one session I've ever done where we, I went on the internet and we actually were viewing the news articles, the photographs, you know, so on and so forth, because it was, it was a way of kind of viewing it together and saying, let's look at this together from a higher perspective. Let's, let's not try to push any of the emotions down. Let them all come up. Let's just gently hand them over. And, and that's really what all of us are doing, whether it's around uh, people being murdered, or whether it's around relationship issues, health issues, financial issues. It doesn't really matter what the, the chatter is about. You know, we're allowing ourselves to let that stuff come up and to hand it over. And really to expect a miracle, you know, to expect release. Because when you don't hide and protect these attack thoughts, they will dissolve away in the light. It's just the idea of protecting things, holding, holding on to things, clinging to things. You know, that's what keeps it in awareness. And when we don't protect it anymore, it goes. You don't have to go on like a witch hunt. You know, just as you go through your daily experiences, things will seem to happen that will be part of like a triggering. You know, like when you, like a, like a medicine, a time release capsule. You know, you almost have like an ego release capsule, where it's just done in segments. And until you reach a point where you say, enough is enough, uh, we can let go of the time release now, too. We don't have to, it doesn't take time to forgive, it just seems to take time uh, when, when the mind's too afraid of what forgiveness would bring. Too afraid of happiness, you know, too afraid of love, then it seems to be a time, time release. Mm -hmm. Got a song? No. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a song. <laughs> I'd like to share, David, while the, the music's being prepared. I had a, an interesting day today. Um, where most of my meditations, I felt guided to sit about three times a day, so I did that. And um, I read the section in the course on I Need Do Nothing, and I brought that into the meditation as guided. And it was a very interesting day because I realized that it's only the identification with the body that proves the separation occurred or seemed to or, or, or seemed to have occurred and I, and, I, and I could see the link that if I hold on to this I'm holding on to separation and it was a wonderful day of just letting the body go totally and realizing that God will look after my body if that's what if it can if it can serve the plan of the atonement it will be used and if not set aside and I'm just Happy either way. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Yeah. That's good. Mm. Yeah, I think it's the feeling just grows stronger and stronger when you really yield into and give way to this glorious purpose that that you really see that, that sharing your love and joy is really what everything is for. It really doesn't have any other meaning except for that. And so, for me, it's over the years it's been a lot of fun to just wake up and, and go my way rejoicing. And I just had a lot of experiences. Um, one time uh, Kirsten and I were going into a McDonald's <coughs> and uh, we were in the southeastern United States and we walked in and 
there was a black man behind the counter and we were maybe 10 or 15 feet away and he was just like started off, off ooh wee I feel the love oh what man do I feel the love he's at the, at the counter and he's like when we got close to him he goes wow I can really feel it now this is amazing. and we were just like looking at each other going like, oh here we go again you know it's like it's nothing it's a typical encounter uh, it, was, it looked a little bit like that. Yeah, he was just as expressive as Eddie Murphy, and we just had we just rejoiced with him. Finally, he punched in some numbers, and we ordered something. But uh, the same thing happened at a at a muscle shop. Um, I was just sitting there, and I was just ooh, I was just in so much love. I could just barely stand still, just sitting in the waiting room, and there was a few people around with me and. And after maybe 10 or 15 minutes of this, uh, I just looked over at this uh, elderly woman and made con eye contact with her. And uh, she just, after about 15 minutes, she just couldn't hold back anymore. She said, isn't God great? And she just <laughs> uh, launched into this big thing about how great God was. And then the man at the Midas mother shop that had the Midas hat on, you know, and he's there, he's behind the counter. He's like, praise the Lord! And it just turned into, it like erupted into a, a revival. Because we were just having a lot of deep prayer and meditation going on there, and, and the other customers were just like, got very big, why not? Like, is this church or? Uh, I'll be in the waiting room. And, uh, and this little peace house where I live, uh, they have this thing, I don't know if they have a similar thing here in Australia, but we have a thing uh, in the United States called uh, the United States Census Bureau, basically that goes around and counts yeah. all the people, yeah. and they've got forms and forms and forms and forms, you know, to ask you all these mundane kind of questions about your your life and so on and so forth. And so the lady comes in to our little peace house, and she's got her clipboard and everything, and she she actually thinks she's going to ask me all these questions, and I just had so much love and joy that that every question that she gave me, whatever it was, the answer came out in terms of love and joy. Uh, and after like the third question, she probably had like a hundred questions or more to ask as part of her job, but after the third question she just was smiling and just feeling all the love, and quite, her eyes were quite curious, like, what have I beheld here? And she slowly just eased the clipboard uh, down on the table and, and the pen slowly down there, and that was it. She, she just wanted to talk about God the whole time. Uh, she was there and she just, we had a big hug before she left and she just grabbed her clipboard and off she went to the next house. But, so it was like, you know, it is kind of nice to think that if you just give your mind over to this so fully and so completely, that even like simple mundane things that seem to be like hoops that you have to walk through, that those will start to melt away. You know, your mind is an extension of God's love. And when you're in that uh, complete alignment with the mind of God, you might say, or the mind of Christ, then, then you'll see these reflections all around you. And isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it sounds like the greatest gift. Am I going to sing that one too, maybe? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. The greatest gift.